that I lead, so some will call me an apple, and some a bad seed. They have no idea how my heart will bleed, the words and attitudes are things I just don't need. You see, I'm proud of who I am, and I'm proud of where I'm from. Those ones spreading racism, they're just fucking dumb. Now if you're looking at my life, and you say I've assimilated, Simplified things, just a little more complicated. See, I'm a modern day native with a modern day life. I have modern day problems and modern day strife. So we will open you up uh, for comments later on, but for now I'm just I'm just muting everybody. Bad hair day, Michelle. <laughs> My house is forced air and it's super okay. cold for some reason today. Oh. Well, nice to see you. Yeah. And also bad hair. <laughs> so our, the uh, presentation today is coming to you live from Prince George. And uh, you'll have to bear with us with our technical stuff if we run into some unusual problems. So far, it's going well. We're supposed to start at four, is that correct? Yeah, thanks, Joe. I'd like to point out that the white guitar immediately behind me is a Jeff Beck model. We're just like a 30 second morning. Oh, okay. We're going to start in about 30 seconds. Okay, we're going to start in about 30 seconds. So welcome everyone who's vis joining us online. Um, we will keep you muted during the presentation and then there will be a discussion afterwards. And um, if anyone gets weird online you will be uh, removed from the room very quickly so please just keep yourself muted and uh any any negative comments or anything like that are just not we are in a safe space and a trusted space so anyone making any comments that anyone might 
consider to be threatening will be immediately removed from, from the session today, just so you know. We've never had that happen, I might add, which is a good thing. And as soon as the folks over there are ready, we'll, uh, we will go live. Bob, did you want that video to be shown before we start or? So I, I think if uh, we couldn't hear it here in the room when you, we were, when you were testing it online. So I'll try and, and share my screen. So you do your introduction, then we'll play the video then it's over to you. And okay, well, I, ha I have done my introduction, so we're ready to go. Oh, Whenever okay. Whenever you are. Well, I look at you, Doug. Let me Faster, I run to the finish line. Those Bollywood things I've already left behind. I'm facing me. I like what I see. In Like a lion waiting, hiding on his prey I only feel the needs of just that day But then a red and winding path before me lay Hello, Hadi! Hadi! Welcome everyone to this incredible collaboration between the Prince George Public Library and the Cold Snap Music Festival and sponsored in part by the Prince George Public Library and Integris Credit Union. And I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, we have been doing these sharing circles virtually in this format uh, for a couple of years now. So I just wanna say welcome to all of you that are online. Can you hear me okay, everybody? Doug, you be, you be the, the sound guy over there. Awesome. So, that sounds great. Who are you? Where, where am I? Ooh, oh, who, who am I? Who am I? Oh, I just, sorry, I've just been so involved in everything. I just think everybody knows who I am all the time. <laughs> my name is Kim Gucci, and this is my ancestral territory, the Clayton Tanae First Nation. 
And I have known Marcel since I was a child. I have, I remember walking with my brother, Buddy, over to Marcel's place to listen to them jam music, play music, and Marcel would always be showing Buddy new things on the guitar, and we were just little kids. So Marcel is a longtime family friend, and I'm so, so honored that you are here with us today so that you can share some of your story because I know what a humble man you are and I know that you don't often like to speak about yourself but that's what the sharing circle is about today is to hear your story so that we're holding space for you as an Indigenous artist as an Indigenous person because this is the time of truth telling recording in progress what, you missed all that? <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> you heard me. You all heard me. So just carry that with you. This is the time of truth telling. And we're here together. There are cameras. So if you do not wish to be photographed, please let Liz know. And Liz can set you up. Uh, with a bracelet of some type so that James knows not to take a picture. And this is also being recorded. And we're gonna hit got it on there as soon as somebody gets over to that computer. But um but yeah, we record these sessions so that we can have them for future reference and so that more people in the world can learn these stories from our incredible artists that have been holding space and carrying messages since the music time immemorial. And so I would love to introduce to you my dear friend, Marcel Gagnon. Thank I think one of the very first songs I ever wrote. First, I want to thank everybody for being here and everybody out there. Don't know who you are, I can't see you, but thanks for joining me today. I want to thank Cold Snap, uh, Kim, Sound People, the audience. Thank you very much for coming out. The support is, uh, means so much to me. I'm not a young man anymore and I need all I can get here. <laughs> So I was asked to come and share and give my perspective on songwriting and sharing some of my story with you and my journey in music. Um, there's, there's a lot there. I'm 74 years old almost now. Um, and I've seen a lot and I've, I've, I've learned a lot. So. I think what I'll do is I'll just start by talking a little bit about uh, when I was just a little, a little boy. I've always been attracted to music. I remember back in the 50s with my older brother tuning into that little 
AM radio upstairs in the old log house and listening to uh, CFUN Vancouver and they were playing Buddy Holly, uh, Dave Brubeck, Hank Williams and everything. And I was so becoming so educated. I think by the time I was 15, I was kind of like an encyclopedia with music. I could hear the first few notes of a song and I could tell you who, who it was and what the song was. Uh, it was an attraction to that. And if you notice in that opening little bio there, you see that little boy with the guitar. I guess that was the first guitar I ever had. I don't know who bought it for me, but it didn't look like a very expensive guitar. But I guess that was my introduction to the actual instrument. I never, I never had the opportunity to play a guitar until I was a lot older, because we couldn't afford one. Um, music and schools, I think, are, are really, really important because it, it, it allows the kids an opportunity to, to play an instrument. So I, I never had that opportunity. I could tell you the story of my first guitar, but you want to hear this? Yeah. 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 I can just say say it, I can sum it up in, in one line. It was a stolen guitar. <laughs> Honest to goodness, it was a stolen guitar. Uh, my buddy stole it and, and he said, I know you play Marcel, so or you wanna play, he said, so I got this for you. And uh, I started to play just uh, learning to strum. I think with me though it was a natural thing. The singing part of my of my life was already established. And believe it or not, when I was a little kid, 15 years old on the streets in Prince George here, I would be more into start spreading the new, you know, the Frank Sinatra stuff and everything. And all my friends were into this, all this other stuff. And they would poke fun at me like, it's a matter, man, get with it. But it was, it was all styles of music that, that drew me. And I'm glad that I would like that because it gave me a, a greater perspective of music itself. I'm going to play just a, a little bit of one of my favorite melodies that I came up with, with this song that took me quite some time to write. But uh, I'll explain how the melody came about and how the arrangements and story about now, everything. the path. 
has then all behind. I started writing songs, my first songs, when I was out in a treatment center. And I started to hear, I was about 45, 46 years old, and I started to hear melodies. And they came anytime, anywhere. And this melody right here. <laughs> Where did that come from? I couldn't, I couldn't uh, figure out where this, but it stayed with me. It wouldn't leave. I went to work in the morning. I worked all day. And throughout the day, I heard that. And I knew at the end of the day, I got to sit down and figure this out. I had a guitar and I literally lit it, did it by note, by note. One string, and uh, then it started to come together. I started to add the other strings and the, the chords and the structure. And everything started to fall, but there was there was no storyline. There was no lyrics to it, and um, it was such a beautiful tune to me because I'd never I'd never heard anything that came from somewhere in here. And I put it away. I just practiced quite a bit with it and then I put it away because the other songs started to come to me. And it was a few years later, this is kind of a sad story, but there was a, a, a lady who, uh, a friend of mine who was, she had AIDS and it was really, really bad. And she asked me, you know, visited her, she said, won't you write a song about me? And I said, ah, I don't know if I could do that. Anyhow, she uh, unfortunately succumbed to her illness. I don't know how long it was after that, but I woke up again and I thought, that's that song. And I dug it out of my memory and sat down and awakened that song again and then I started to write the lyrics for it. There's a part in the song where if you do get a chance and listen to the CBC album that song is on there and it's just chaos. Eh? The chaos signifies the fact that she had she lost her battle. And it just goes off. And I remember when we were recording it uh, in CBC studio in Vancouver, um, I was just amazed at the musicianship there. I said, chaos, you guys were, were, were playing about someone passing away. So it was like, it was crazy. And then it comes back to that beautiful uh, melody and everything. Anyhow. Where, that, where does that stuff come from? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea where any of that comes from. Now that I'm a lot older and I'm not out there chasing the rainbow anymore, the musical rainbow that I used to chase, I've had a chance to 
step off and, and go and do other things and, and learn. And there's somebody in this room that I know very well who's on the same journey, that indigenous journey of going back to the old things that were so meaningful. So that that's where I, I kind of wound up today. The music, I'm writing music again, and I love it. I bought a piano, and I never thought, I always admired a piano, but I thought it was too complicated. And now I sit there and I, it's like, holy moly, I never realized how beautiful and how easy it was to play. So I spend five o'clock in the morning, if you hear me pounding away on the keys, and I'm enjoying it now. I know I'm, I don't really prepare myself for any real structure. This is all new to me. So I'm just going to throw it out there right now. I know there was a question period after, but I really wouldn't mind if you have something you want to share or a question you got or something, just fire it at me and let's figure it out. I know there's a lot of musicians here, so. I, I... I would love to hear, and I'm sure we would all to love to hear your story, like about how your the drum is calling you, story. The drum is calling you. Thank you, Kim. The drum is calling me home as a. It's a play. It became a play thanks to Karen Jeffrey and the Sunset Theater and in uh, Wells. But I played there a couple of times. I know I ran into a friend of mine out there who played there regularly, but um, yeah, she thought, let's try something, Marcel. And she threw the suggestion at me. And before we knew it, uh, the whole story developed into an onstage play, which we ran in, at the theater a few times. But the drum is calling you home is actually about my journey through music and, and with an animal sim symbolism in each part of the four-part play. But it's so unique. There's a sweat lodge on stage. Uh, and there's another actor playing the little me, the little Marcel, dipping salmon and all that stuff. It, it, was, it was really, really cool. It's unique because it's uh, theater, storytelling, concert, and ceremony all in the same package on the same stage. It's unique. I wish we could uh, bring that play and tour that play because I think it was, Karen would say that too, it, it turned out to be quite an amazing uh, piece of work. But she was the one who oversaw the designing and everything of it. And I can tell you right now, I'm not an actor. <laughs> that was the hardest thing I ever did in my life, oh my God. Forgetting lines and yeah, it's just not me. But Karen just thought it was it was a beautiful thing. And yeah, gave me an opportunity to share some some of my life. Anybody are you, else? Are you willing to share some of your life with us? Like those stories that inspired that play? Yeah, there was a few. Um, you know, I look around Prince George now, I'm turning 74 in May, and I see, a, I see a, a place that has changed so much. The only thing that's really, really constant in there is that bridge, the one they, they took three or four years to repair, like what the heck was that all about? Anyhow, as a little kid, we used to, I used to have to skate on the river. We lived downstream. And in the winter time, because we never, my dad could never afford a thermos, so it would be close to lunch on the weekend. We'd be at home, and she'd say she'd wrap that mason jar with hot coffee and a towel. She'd say, "Don't break it. Get this to your dad. He needs it right away." Oh man, did I ever skate? Just hair straight back to skating. <laughs> I remember him sitting on the bridge, swinging his legs, watching us come up the ice with his lunch. Stories like that are, are part of
part of my, my childhood, fishing salmon down at the river, listening to those owls that night, being so scared, afraid to move away from the fire. Yeah, it's just all those things like I now that I'm older I go back. I I think though, you know, Kim, I think that influence is uh, an artist and I guess I am an artist and I think all those things that I grew up seeing and being part of influenced me to see to see a story from a, a bit of a different perspective than what's actually there. I, I tend to want to look beyond that that story because I know there's more back there. And that's what I try to I, I want to bring that out in my music, and sometimes it's a little bit hard, but it's like this. Everybody plays this little riff. It's like this cartoon I saw, this piano player in an old saloon with a singer, and all of a sudden uh, the door swings open, there's this gunslinger ready to shoot somebody down and the singer looks at the piano player and says, quick, go to an A minor. I got kind of like, that's my song, eh? kind of in that minor thing. But that song, like, that's about a wolf. That was about a, a wolf kill because a friend of mine was bragging about, and I, I shouldn't say bragging, but he was really proud that he was getting paid so much money to shoot these animals from a chopper. And it bothered me. I didn't, none of my business, so I never said anything to him, but it just bothered me for a long time. And one day I was sitting out at the lake and I just heard this. Can I play a little? I guess it's natural because of all the stuff I, I saw and everything that I went through as a child growing up. Let's face it, as Indigenous people, you know, I've got to be very conscious of how we say things. But I know it happens everywhere. But in my case, and I can only speak for me, I witnessed a lot of sad things. And uh, it's even when I write the music, I, you know how hard it is to write a happy song. The only happy song I gotta play this one for you. This is <laughs> this is the only happy song. I but you gotta sing it with me. Doesn't that sound happy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember that little riff. When you hear that little riff, you have to sing. I know you never heard this song before, but I know you're going to sing it with me. It's about a chicken. Chelsea chicken chased the cattle every day. Picking and a pecking, refusing to lay. Farm 
Farmer Charlie begged her, lay me just one egg. Please, Chelsea Chicken, don't you make this old man beg. Now you gotta sing with me, it's coming around. When you hear the guitar do that, then you gotta start singing. Are you all ready? Yeah. You ready, Shirley? <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> That's my only happy song. <laughs> you know when they say music is, I believe is that music is emotion, it's the expression of an emotion. And that's been a difficult part for me to write is that, that happy stuff thing. But the kids love that song. I used to play it at the school. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? I see some people here that I haven't seen for a long time. It's good to see you. Come on, there's got to be one question. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, Marcel. Thanks for sharing with us uh, today. Thank you, sir. Um, your songwriting process and how you started. Uh, when we grow up, when, where I'm from, when we were growing up, we're taught who we are, where we're from, and that we have gifts to bring and to offer. So happy you found yours when you did and you shared with us. Uh, I just wondered uh, if you could sort of tell or talk about what your songs were about at the beginning of your healing journey through music and what they've evolved to become now. Beautiful. That's a very, very powerful uh, question. Um, I'm not, I do play the guitar and, and quite a bit of piano now, but um, three years ago, well, actually for the last, 20 years probably, I was looking for something to bring that uh, fulfillment, that spiritual fulfillment. And I felt that there was that missing part. And uh, I wound up venturing across the mountains over to Alberta to, uh, to the Blood Reserve, to the home of the Blackfoot people. And uh, over there, I, I, I saw, I saw something that I, I only read about, or I saw once in a movie, and didn't know that it, uh, it still existed in its, in its natural form. And I wound up staying there. I, I'm still there. It's called Piercing Sundance. Uh, probably it's the most powerful ceremony that I'd ever been to. And then to actually go and do it, that was all my curiosity and that urging to, to go to a spiritual place was all fulfilled the moment that I, I walked up to that, where they danced me over to the tree. Maybe people don't talk about this, and maybe some people might even have feelings about me speaking about this, but um, I look at it as being a part of my, my healing journey through music to hear those songs that I know in my heart, probably sitting whoa, crazy horse. Russell Means, absolutely. Dennis Banks, we're all part of. And, and to know that it was still, still alive. It really, really struck home for me when, when we, we were awakened at night to dance in the dark. Some people call it ghost dance. I asked the leaders, I said, why do we do that? They told me. They said, we want to honor those who, uh, who sacrifice their own life to keep these ceremonies going. Because they would, they would have executed you or definitely jailed you for doing those things down there. So 
being on that journey now is uh, it's the greatest, more fulfilling than than uh, any concert I ever did. And I think about the Olympic bid and Plaza of Nations and all those people and everything. Uh, yeah, that was a wild ride, but this this one is uh, something different. Powerful about it, something very fulfilling. So yeah, the music now. I'm just starting on a new venture with my drum, and I'm. I got this crazy idea. I actually applied for some funding, and they gave it to me. So I want to. I want to write songs for our nation, morning songs, encouragement songs, entry songs. I want to do it in, 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 in our dialect here. And, uh, that's my new venture. There's something so beautiful and powerful about the, the hand drum and the rattle and everything. Now that I've been to, to a ceremony, I understand. Like, we don't paint our drums. Because there's a teaching that if you paint stuff, you're inviting another spirit into ceremony so we tend not to do that that's why i say it stays just the way it was for a long time i i, I wish i could speak more on it but i'm not schooled enough yet i'm i'm in my third year this will be my third year to go there and i can't pierce anymore because i'm on blood thinner and i wouldn't stop bleeding if they pierced me so uh, i go and one of the other dancers pierces for in the end, I still, when they do the suffering, I just uh, <laughs> reap the rewards, you might say. <laughs> it's all really good. So, do I feel complete and fulfilled? I do. I want to thank, thank you guys. I don't know where we are with time. Can you give me a... We've got about, I would say another, get yeah, long time. Good. Well, come on, throw another question out there. Yeah, we've you've you've, you've been here for about 40 minutes. Okay. So you have about another 20, and then 20-ish, and yeah. then we can get into some discussions. There might be uh, questions online as well. We often get questions from our online people. Who's that guy up there? <laughs> no, he just showed up when you were singing. <laughs> There's a gentleman back there that had a question. I want to say thanks a lot for sharing. Uh, I'm only really young from Indian Lake First Nation. My father's from Ottawa, Regina, Saskatchewan. Um, there's two things that you spoke to there that I really are interested in. Uh, it's regarding your journey through song. You said you performed at the Plaza, Plaza Nation for the Olympic bid. And then you moved on to, uh, you're working culturally now, more in a ceremonial way. And one of the issues that I heard was in our teachings, we're not allowed. To, we have to be very careful what we share publicly. Yeah. So, how is your performance changed, or how do you see it changing from the Plaza Nations work that you did with your original material, and now working in a ceremonial or a cultural way? How has your protocol, your way, way of knowing, been your presentation of information changed? It's an awesome question. Um, it humbled me. It knocked my legs from under me, and it humbled me to the point where music wasn't anything about me anymore. I wasn't a star. I never will be a star. The ceremony and everything brought me to a place where the sound of that drum, the sound of those eagle whistles blowing in the middle of the night, it awakened something so old, so, so far back there, I still don't know what it is completely, but I, I read once about epigenetics in regards to trauma, and I, I really believe that that those things are passed forward. And I feel like I'm because I made that decision to go. I'm 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 part of it now. So the, the way I look at music is through different eyes, through different ears. I hear it now. Because none of it is mine. None of it is mine. 
It's a story like that girl that I, I knew that passed away. That was her story. And I just wanted to tell it. And I did it with the guitar. It's changed. It's so humbled me. In the presentation of the work before, now you're presenting more, I wouldn't say cultural work. How does a host, someone who takes care of this space that you're in now, what are their considerations? Uh, either at a festival, there's a lot of festival people online or people here at Pulse now. How do they host you in that good way so you can comfortably and respectfully share, share this new story, this new process? I think I would draw the line. I'm an elder. There's a beautiful elder sitting here. We have special privileges. I know uh, there's so much to learn, but I know that as an elder, I have a lot more uh, rights that maybe I've earned, maybe not. In the indigenous community, elders are revered a lot, and they get they get special privileges. So I would be very careful how I how I present. I'm constantly, as I was talking to you about the Sundance, I was I was constantly thinking, don't say anything stupid, don't say anything that might offend somebody. So you're, it's it's such a guarded thing, but. I think it's a time where we have to just be bold and say, go. Just go there. You don't have to curse, just go there. You know, you want to really learn what our history and who we are. Maybe that's over the mountain, but we, we have stuff like that over here too. We just, it has to be there. So. Am I rambling too much? Did I even get no, close no. to answering your question? I don't want to confuse anybody. Marcel, I'd like to ask you a question if I can. Can you hear me from the computer world here? <laughs> <laughs> we hear a voice. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm curious as a, as a white person, um, are all old people who are indigenous considered to be elders is my first question. Or is that a title that's placed on specific old people? And if it is all old people, what is the age when you become an elder? Well, I heard the first part of your your comment. Uh, I think if you're non-indigenous, I've heard the word senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it's the same thing. I just prefer to call people elders who reach. A, an age, like the government says 65 and you get an old age pension. Well, whatever. I mean, to me, an elder is somebody who's, uh, who's seen a lot and has gone through, wow, well, anything, not ugly things, but just life experience. And now their duty is to share with people and say, don't be doing that. You're going to get yourself in trouble, you know, because I've been here before. That, that's all I think it is. I don't know. Thank you. Go ahead. So, when you've reached out and I believe Creator brings people into our lives, different nations, and you, you're, you're learning from, from, you're going, where are you going to do your uh, ceremony? If you were here, when you're not getting to what, the ceremony where you go to, where is that located? Is that in Clayton territory or is that like where it's called here are the piercings happening? It's called the Morris Crow piercing something. Yeah, Morris Crow. Morris Crow is a, a man who spent I think twenty years in, in South Dakota and Pine Ridge. He was the only and first man to ever climb Mount Sinai. Pope and the Dalai Lama wouldn't go up there. They had to be flown. So they chopped them up to the top. The old man said, no, I'm going to walk every inch of that mountain. And he did. And he sat there and did a pipe ceremony. We have, we have quite a leader. Yeah. Um, if you want to go, uh, they've set the dates for July. 
You can just go on the internet and look up Morris Crow's Sundance and you'll find it. it. It will be in July. There's tree day, there's camp days and everything. But honestly, if you get a chance, I'm not trying to say, come on, yeah, everybody. I'm just saying, if it interests you, you know, I was told before I went and actually danced by one of the leaders, they said, Marcel, if you start to dream about it, spirit is calling you. And, and that's what happened to me. I started to dream about dancing. So, so, we'll just start to so I, I was honored to sweat with you and, and that gentleman. So when we, when we, like, I'm like not saying all the nations, like I'm with Suetin and Kitsan, and there's so many different protocols and cultural ways of life. Um, we're okay to bring that over to, to up here in British Columbia and, and, and we perform that ceremony here. Does it have to be like Blackfoot is, I think, we see the nation right down in Calgary, we see North Dakota. Uh, so is it, it's hard to follow protocols with everybody. You know, I, I, me, I, I, I don't put in the hard rate, I've never been taught. So I'm just wondering what's, let's see, like, there are obviously welcoming people to, to come out of indigenous ancestry to come, or any ancestry to come. Is it hard to, to I don't really want to say people please, but follow the protocol and be okay with? Yeah. It's, I, I know we don't, I believe in creator. I believe in from my heart, but I just, you know, we get Clayton teachings. I live, I love Clayton. I, I grew up here since age six, in this territory, I'm 80%. Is there Clayton teachings that are like that? Like, like the human sweat laws, or, or like, are these part of, like, what's the, my main question is, what's the roots of Clayton's teaching? The protocols are very, very going, different. Going to other places. Yeah. Their protocols are quite different. Yeah. Like, to, to, you dance for four years to, to have the right to own your lodge. Um, but it's mostly, it's simple. It's like when in Rome, you go there and just watch and observe. I'm, I was there for almost 20 years before I made my commitment to dance. And I just wanted to know. But every time that I went and came back, something new opened up for me creatively, um, spiritually, different perspectives and views of everything were changing for me and until I actually did the dance and then it all made sense to me like, okay, now I'm, I'm here and I'm actually doing it. Just go, Wesley, just go there, man. You can ride with me. <laughs> I said all that for nothing. <laughs> that I one feel like good. Kim. That one got It's all good. <laughs> Can I play a little bit more? Or you want to play by it? <laughs> Neil Young up here listening. Change in me. 
You winds of change I know have set me free Faster and faster I run to the finish line But left behind I'm facing me I like what I see In change Like a lion waiting Hiding on his prey I only feel the needs of just that day But then a red and winding path before me lay My pride restored you sent me on my way I'm facing me I like what I see in change Master, I know you're everywhere They claim you're in their church and over there But it confuses me to hear the things they say We seek you and we worship in our own way you know the wizards came, we had nowhere to hide They stole the kids and locked them up inside And our beliefs, our tongues, our clans almost destroyed Preaching, gloating, and truly overjoyed I'm facing me and I love, I love what I see in change, in change, in Can I get it? Like, we, we had a, the opening there was just, you know, from the first time I heard it, it's always. Are you an elder or a senior? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, John. Do we have any more questions in the room? Yes. Um, I've got really a question, but I don't know this. Great, the motion I want to share. Um, really, even my heart is struggling to survive right now. I know we're strong here today because I knew there would be energy in this room that I needed, that I would like to send to that people who are here. I mean, through his life, um, George, his mom, the fairies. Um, anyways, um, yeah, so I just thought I would come here. 
see some energy to the send some energy to Scott. Absolutely. A fantastic human who needs to stay on this for a long time. Thank you. Yes, sir. No hard questions. All right. All right. <laughs> so, with, uh, with your lived experience, um, tragedy, tragedy, goodness, you know, the sadness in every community, you, know, you said that you witness a lot. And it's hard to um, create a happy song because of those. What is something that keeps you grounded and resilient? And your then, company. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you can tell to everyone, you know, how do you, how do you create hope? I think, that, thanks for that, Chairman. I got a lot of friends out here today. It cost me a lot of money to get all these people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that I keep my myself level you got to remember we're, we're, we're human I maybe this might shed a little light on it but I received that honorary degree from the university and it was such a, a joyous thing to receive something so huge but as time went on I started to become very aware of, of what that was and it became almost like it was something hovering over me, waiting for me to make a mistake so that it can be snatched away from me. I know that's a, this I know and understand is my, my childhood trauma that's, that brings these things to my attention and brings me to those places. I know that. So I, I will always struggle with, with, with balance and grounding. But uh, there again is where music um, that gives me that grounding. Uh, I, I just, I'm not creating as, uh, songs the way I used to, but I'm playing a lot. Even if it's my hand drum or something, it, it's keeping me grounded and I can look at everything going on around me and, and say, okay, that's, it's, it is what it is. I have to, you know, that old, the teaching with the Cree people, it's about the buffalo. He puts his head down and he faces the storm like the muskox. And, and that's how I try to look at it. Just say, okay, I've got to face this now. I deal with it, and level things out, stay grounded. But yeah, it's music, it's friends, having people come and visit them. Yeah. What a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. I think when um uh, you have been part of my life for eight years wow. so i remember your cheese and your prayers when i was very, very. Yeah. There's a song that you can share with your audience that you can write down about thanking the Creator for the life that they gave us, because that's what I got back alive. Wow. Well, um, I didn't know that uh, it's been eight years. It's good to see you again. I haven't seen you guys for a while. Yeah, no, go ahead. I think this is the You've been through a lot. Look at her now. Good. 
à travers un petit divertissement dans le monde organique, il n'est pas censé marcher. Il n'est pas censé se prier là. Attention. Happy for you. And I will see, uh, I'll see your husband. You guys phone me and come over. Deal? We all good? Thank you guys. Thank you so much. And for everybody who's way out there and that, just wonder what the people of ours would have done 300 years ago heard a voice coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been crazy. Anyhow, thank thank everybody out there. Uh, Bob, great job here, you guys. Thank you. Met some new people today. And I get to see Joan, so thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Kim. Marcel, there was a question online. I'm sorry, I, I just saw it um, from Caliuti. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, sir. Would you like to ask your question or would you like me to, to read it? <laughs> Go ahead, I can't read it. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Well, I learned something about the old man at the dance and that he was very insistent on having the four colors. This is just about the piercing sun now. He said, nothing is complete without the four directions, the four colors, they, they all have to be part of the circle. And when I heard that, it just kind of, it made me realize that it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, we're all part of the same thing. So when it comes to sharing the ceremony, it's open in the, to anyone. Yes, there are ceremonies that are, are so treasured and like the sacred bundle ceremonies, those are very, very treasured things. And it's not just, I guess there's different, uh, uh, I won't say degrees, but different views on uh, how these ceremonies are presented and why. I like the idea that that a ceremony is open. Some ceremonies are open to everybody so that people can learn. Because I, I, I really think that people should know. Um, I got to go back to this beautiful senior citizen here who, who uh, she got very emotional. That made me feel like she's coming into my world and understanding my world through those words and i gave her something that she could emotionally relate to and she learned from it and that that's quite an honor for me to be able to do that for someone so i think it's about education sharing is a good thing
without getting into any real details of that. But boy, that could be a slippery slope. <laughs> Hope that answered your question a bit. We're good? I think. <laughs> oh my god i could tell you some stories of things that happened and, and in the end you know what i went to the the 2002 juno i was nominated for a juno and i was one of the finalists and it was such a great big glorious event in St. John's, Newfoundland. There was kids everywhere wanting autographs and holding up their shoes and everything. And uh, I asked one of the kids, I said, do you even know who I am? And he said, no. I said, well, <laughs> boy, that's comforting. Anyhow, um, I think all those, all those incidents and has taught me that uh, Music can be pretty damn shallow. It can be pretty shallow if you're chasing that kind of thing. You're, you're a poet. I'd love to see some of your poetry. I'd love to hear some. Because you sound like someone who writes from the heart. Your questions tell me that they're not just skimmed off the surface. It's, there's depth to your questions. And, uh, I'd like to get to know you a little bit more, maybe connect with me online or something. But yeah, I, I, I've seen a lot of silliness and stuff like that out there. I just want to be a musician. Like John Sorensen said, John Sorensen was the uh, engineer on three of my albums. John was the guy who won the, uh, him and Sean, Sean just won five Grammys last year. John won two with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So these guys have been around. And, and John says to me, myself, do you want to write music that, that stays around forever? Do you want to write it trendy so it's here today and gone later on today? And I chose to write things that I hope will be around for a while. Be real. Thank you for that. I think we're done, eh? Well, you're, you're like, you're early. Yeah. <laughs> nice you done. know what you need in here? You need a clock. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true. You're so normally, Marcel, normally when we're doing our on, online Zooms, like now we go from 4 to 5.30. It is now 5.10 or 5.11. Or so we can wrap up early. That's not a problem. Or we can hang out and talk a little bit more. Hello, Katie. Yeah, <laughs> let's hang out. We can hang out and talk a little bit more. Why don't we make the circle smaller? Yeah, well, oh, yeah let's bring it in. And then we'll give Bahi the guitar and he can entertain <laughs> it. <laughs> as long as we're out of the space by six, we're good, in good hands. <laughs> Now you can ask your question. Hey, there we go. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> um, are we, did we shut down online or are we still good online? We are still online. Okay, good. I was really intrigued by your description of the stage, stage event in Wells. You said it was both uh, a piece of theater and also uh, a ceremony, a yeah. ritual. And I'd love to hear about uh, the overlap. Theater and ceremony, or, or the things that are uh, are you know, distinct for each one, but there's you know, there's a really rich overlap between the players. Recording stopped. When I walked onto the stage, one of the things I did is I had a message on my face, all of the other stage. And I walked over to 
40 percent. To everybody online, I think we're going to shut down because uh, this is just too awkward <laughs> for all of us. Um, we're, and and it, it's nice that they can have a sort of an intimate moment there with a real circle. Um, thank you very much for, for attending. Next time we'll be back with uh, with a more, um, probably just a, a regular online session again. And uh, it's amazing we have people from Labrador to... Ontario to Nashville to uh, Prince Edward Island here today. Cal Udy, I have to ask you: Is that is that picture behind you? Is that Saul Hoopy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Johnny Cash. Okay, thank you. I've been wondering. Can't see it that clearly. Of course, it's Johnny Cash. Okay. So I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna go online here. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. Marcel, thank you. Kim, Reverend Bob, we'll see you guys soon. Enjoy your festival. Yes, sir. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thanks, Cheryl. Bye-bye. Sugali? Okay, so I think Mike has gone over. So, Goli Swag Greg, um, again, I hope that you enjoyed that. That was Marcel Ganon, and um, I, I it's a French name, so I'm not 100% sure I'm pronouncing that last name correctly, so I apologize to him if, I, if I'm if i butchering his last name, but um, certainly um, uh, anytime we have uh, an opportunity to listen to an elder speak, um, it's always a great uh, opportunity to share, um, and we definitely want to do that whenever we can, so that um, you, we we are always telling our our experiences. Um, I know that some people will call them stories, and it it's, could be semantics for some, but um, these are our lives uh, that we share. And so these are experiences for me, uh, from my perspective, that, that people like Marcel is, uh, is giving is uh, his life experience and uh, his uh, teachings that he gets from, from his communities and, and uh, shares with us. So I appreciate that he did that. And I'm glad uh, for anyone who actually popped in and um, joined us tonight. Uh, thank you. Um, I would say big yonko. Uh, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to um, uh, set up a uh, array to go out and uh, share some love with uh, with another streamer. So I would hope that you will stick around uh, while we do that. Um, I'm going to, as we end all of our streams, is I play a, a rendition of The Peaceful Warrior. Um, just as uh, so I can set up the, uh, the the raid and give you uh, post the raid calls in the chat so that you can copy them. Um, so if you can do that, uh, copy the raid call and then uh, refresh your chat so that you're counted properly when we go over into the, our next streamer. So in the meantime, I'm going to get my mug off the screen and I'm going to uh, start the, the raid call and then I'll put our raids in the chat and we'll go over and uh, and. Uh, share some love with another streamer so let me get uh disappear just like magic and uh we will go with um composi since i finished my last stream off with her my name's composi and i'm at war for peace all senseless attacks i see must cease so what am i doing here Gotta change its way Gonna battle for the red, white, yellow, and black Gonna fight for the ones who can't fight back And I'm talking about the creatures from the water to the sky About the issues from the truth to the lies Gonna make my sand with a paper and a pen Wanna argue that go back to bed again Cause you're never gonna win against what I 
stand for. So sit down and listen as I give my grand tour. I'm going to target corruption in our government. Target the poison in our environment. I'm going to target the justice to the people. I'm going to hit every target or I won't keep still. I'm going to battle the battle of all battles. Shake up the cage until it rattles. And you're never going to get rid of me. Not until the problems of the world are cut at the knee. Know what I'm saying. Let me kick this out one more time. My message is in rhyme, my name's Composey, and I'm at war for peace. Now since this attacks, I see my seas. I'm gonna fight for the red, white, yellow, and black. Fight for the ones who can't fight back. So let's keep passing round our information. Improve this planet through education. Somebody's got to make the people aware. Somebody's got to make everybody care So pass my message on if you dare And whether it's mine or yours We all got to share because there's more Power in one person's voice Than all the weapons of military choice With our voices we can shout out loud We're part of the human race and we are proud You don't have to be a master of science to see We need to make a worldwide Ask some people for insubordination when they bring what's happening to our waters and the disease spreading through our slaughters. About the government officials right behind them with their back door handshakes and verbal deals that bind them. We've seen the world can be devastated through the actions of people with their minds of hatred. There's no getting through a war without losses. Lenin, King, and Gandhi are symbolic. Speakers. I just dropped a link in Discord in the videos section about uh, with a video he already posted of the On the Outside remix. So don't everybody go run and watch it right now, but it's up on YouTube. He tagged me in it. Very, very cool. Maddie subscribed to Tier 3. Thank you so much, Maddie, for helping us get those... those uh, Partner plus points. Thank you so much. And Dark Native just raided. Welcome in. Shekoli, Dark Native, and friends. How was your stream? Thank you so much for the raid. Great to see you. And um, we're in the middle of a hype train. Brenda, fabulous. Thanks for the 500 bits. Yeah, guys, we had we had a great time yesterday. Thank you for those of you that came to the stream and for supporting, uh, supporting that. Um, and, uh, hey mom, welcome in. <clears throat> Erica Fernandez, welcome in. Welcome Raiders. Hi Dark Native, hi Decang. Oh, thank you. The video was, was good, wasn't it? They had a, a nice camera, a guy that was doing camera work was really fun. And, um, Adi, Adi Oop, welcome in. And, uh, thanks everybody for hanging, for hanging out. Thanks for shouting out Ari Tien. And thanks again Towards Night for the raid. We got a raid by Towards Night and we got a raid from Dark Native. So follow both of those streamers. And, um, thank you. Let's see. Dark Native, what were you doing today? Just had a short pop-up to share a talk by an elder slash musician. That's so cool. Thank you for all you do to share um, and inform and educate people about indigenous culture. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Uh, Hi, Jay Cantor. Hi, Sniper. Hi, Uncle Alan, Heather Butler. Hi, Mom. Hi, Ruscular. Does the cameraman have a Twitch handle? Here's what he told me, Ruscular. He used to stream on Twitch, but he hasn't streamed in a couple of years. And he may, may or may not stream again. And he did not tell me his Twitch handle. 
And if he followed me yesterday, I'm not sure which one he was. Um, but thank you for asking. Um, hi, Fantastic Kitty. Enjoy your dinner, S. Waters. Thanks for coming by. All right, guys. We're in a level 8 hype train, y'all. Thanks, everybody, for all the support already. And, uh... Oh, Eagle Eye, welcome in. Thank you so much for the follow. Good to see you. I appreciate appreciate the people that followed yesterday. You didn't get to really see what I'm all about quite as much. Um, because I was kind of just trying to keep up with Ari. But um today, feel free, Eagle Eye, if you'd like to pick out a song request as a new follower, uh, so you can hear a song that you that you might like if you see anything in the song list um and thanks for coming by um yeah so thank you al um and guys this high train c1 rockstar thank you for the community gift sub um okay guys let's see do we have any actual song requests in the chat Um, I'm going to start with this. Let's start with an Ridge today. <clears throat> um, I'm going to put these on just so I make sure that nothing sounds wacky. <clears throat> um, hi, King Dambreaker. I'm going to do a, um, do a request for, for Lisa's tier three sub. Thank you so much, Lisa. Oh, gotta turn the shoe lights on. On Wednesdays we wear green, but if you wanna change the color, there's a channel point for that. And uh, towards night and dark and native, make sure to get a song request in there if you have time to stick around for your raid requests. And thanks again. All right, this is this is um, my newest single. It was about a year ago, but I'm hoping to get some more songs out soon. This is my newest single called uh, You're No Good For Me. Saw you across the room. You caught me looking at you. This no contact rule is so hard to do, but I'm not about to restart. 